Close your eyes and lift your hands in the presence of Almighty Father. Lord, we love you. We adore you. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in our hearts. You are welcome in our minds. Every aspect of who we are, every aspect of our very being, we submit and surrender and yield to you. Lord, come and have your way in the lives of your children. Touch every heart that we will never be the same. That when we leave this building, we know that we know that we know the ways of God and that we have encountered our Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, we celebrate you in this place. I thank you for the shed blood of Jesus upon every saint in this house. Right now, every sin has been completely removed. Temptation is being dealt with because God is releasing grace to empower you not to go down those paths of temptation. Father, I thank you for the power of the cross that destroys the power of sin. Father, you have given us all the weapons. You've given us all the tools to have victory. Amen. Yes, Lord. And I know, Father God, that in this place, that when we take you serious, we know you will take us serious. For you have moved, and now you're waiting for us to move. You have done the mighty work through your Son. Now we are saying, do the rest in and through us. According to Philippians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6, For you, O Lord, have started a good work in us, and you shall see it to completion. And we give you full permission to have your way. We give you permission, my Lord, because you will never force anything upon our will. Because you have given us free will. And in this house, Lord God, we surrender our will to you this evening. And we say, Father God, let not my will be done, but your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Father, let your kingdom invade us. Let your kingdom move through us. Let us be a people that demonstrate your goodness and your mercy. Father, I thank you that even in this time right now, you bring in healing to many bodies. Pain is going right now. It is illegal in your body right now. It has no right in your body. It must go. Fear has no right in your body. Anxiety has no right. It's illegal in the presence of God because God right now is pouring out His perfect love and anxiety and fear must go in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you right now that even people here, yeah, they're going to be surprised by the miracles that you're going to be doing even in the area of their finances. That you're going to be releasing a greater favor in their lives. That people will be shocked to see the promotion in their lives. They're going to see acceleration in their lives. They're going to see breakthrough in their lives because you are the Almighty. Because they're surrendering to you, my Lord. Father, we are opening our ears. We're saying, speak to us. Father, we are opening our eyes so that we may see what you are doing. And I thank you, Father God, that you are giving us the revelation of heaven. You're giving us the revelation of your plan and your purpose for our lives. Father, we submit to you. This is not a man's strategy. It's not an organization strategy. It is your strategy, your kingdom plan for each and every one of us. Father, as we come together as, as, a, as a body and as individuals, my Lord, we want to bring you praise, honor, and glory. No man will take any praise. No man will take any honor. No man will take any glory in this house, my Lord, because everything belongs to you. And we are opening ourselves up and saying, Lord, we will steward everything that you give us for your glory and your namesake. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. And if you agree, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated in heavenly places. Thank you, Jesus. It's nice to meet uh, new faces. It's good to see you. Trust you'll be blessed. Those we haven't seen in a while, welcome back. Hallelujah. I see everybody at the back. Praise God. We see you. We see you. Trust you are all blessed. You've had a good week. You've had a good um, couple of days. I want to ask, um, since the weekend, who's been practicing uh, the, 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 the principles of praise and worship at home? Have you actually uh, uh, realized that there's a shift 
Have you noticed how easy it is actually to get into the presence of God when you know how to do it the right way? Amen? It's like, you know, the, the height of insanity is doing the same thing, hoping for a different result. And that's what Christians today are doing. They, 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 they're trying to press into the presence of God, and they don't know how to do it. And they're doing things, and uh, it displeases the Lord. And then they're they, they saying, Lord, why? But when, when we do it His way, that's when we see the greatest results. You know, um, like... You need to understand these past couple of weeks, before even lockdown, you notice how we've been talking about the supernatural, talking about faith, how to build up your faith to operate in the supernatural so that you know that you know that you know you have victory. Every principle, and we got people sharing testimonies of how God has blessed them. People are starting businesses, and, and people even went for interviews in the midst of lockdown, getting better jobs, getting better salaries. And if that's not, that has not, we don't take any praise for that. We take no, no credit for that. We give God all the glory for that. People are being blessed. Now, I understand sometimes when you hear a preacher or a pastor speaking about this, and you're sitting and you're saying, but pastor, my situation, if you only knew... I am telling you the same God is going to visit your house if you just do what He asks you to do. If He can do it for another, He'll do it for you. He's no respect of person. You need to understand that. God is no respect of persons. But it is sin that separates man from the blessing of God. So we need to understand. Stay away from certain things and you will gain access to greater blessings in your life. I promise you. Amen. And we need to understand that I've been uh, trying to prepare us to go into a new dimension of walking in Christianity. Not the concept what people have been taught. Because today when you look, people that call themselves Christians are hypocrites. There's no power. They're not walking in authority. They are beat up, disgusted and busted. Please understand, your situation is going to change when you do it God's way. I have tasted poverty, I've tasted sickness, I've tasted death, and I despise it all and I accept life. And I'm telling you today, all you need to do is receive what Jesus has for you. And Jesus has so much for you. But all you need to do is open your heart to Him. Amen. You need to open your heart to the Word. Open your heart to the Spirit of God. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach people, if you understand the Old Testament, okay, and you understand the protocols of God, you will have greater success. Many people pass over the Old Testament because there's so many names and um, this offering, that offering, and people pass it because it, 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 it's tedious. Okay, no, I, I can see, I mean, uh, all you guys enjoy the Old Testament. So I'm talking to the other, the other people that don't like the, the Old Testament because it's just name upon so-and-so begot so-and-so, so-and-so begot so-and-so. And you don't realize how prophetic begotten begotten is because each name is prophetic. There's a reason that name is there. And you'll actually see the first 10 names in the Bible actually prophesize the, G, the coming of Jesus. Yeah, it's right there, the first 10 names. When you go read the Hebraic meaning of each name, the first 10, you'll see, it's telling you the coming of Christ. Amen. Up to Noah, which means rest. Hallelujah. So, I'm trying to get us to a place of understanding that how people have been doing church and Christianity in the past is going to change. Because things are full of false doctrines, false teachings. People are weak. But Christians are supposed to rule and reign because right from the beginning, you need to understand the Bible, the Hebraic way, the prophetic in the Hebraic, it's patterns. And you'll see a, a pattern right through the entire Bible. The Greek form of prophecy is to prophesy and to see the manifestation of it. But when you get the two together, you get uh, dangerous prophecy. But you need to understand the patterns of God. You need to know the template of God. So when you look right in the book of Genesis, you'll see it right there where everything God intended for mankind, that's how it's supposed to be today. But because of the fall, man has fallen so far away from the plans and the purposes of God. But the good news is Jesus came to restore us. And now we need to renew our minds and believe what God is for us. Like I said, I've tasted poverty and I did not enjoy it. But my life is different now. Why? Because of the grace of God and the principles of God. If you just apply the principles, you will see results. Okay, look at it like this. If you're working at a company and the manager gives you certain instructions, do your job X, Y, and Z. And if you do not do it X, Y, and Z, they have the right to reject the work, correct? They even have the right to even give you a warning because you rebelled. Because I'm going to do it my way. 
Imagine now Michael is a mechanic and uh, the, his boss says, listen here, yeah, uh, I need you to put in a new turbo and he ends up putting in a water pump. How do you think that's going to go down? Even though he said I'm qualified, but he's putting the wrong parts in the wrong place. And now that's cost his boss money. It's cost him even a, 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 probably a, a client. I'm using you for illustration purposes. I'm not saying that's what happened. But now his boss or his manager has the right to give him a warning. Depending on how severe the damage was to the business. So with us understanding natural things. If your mom and your dad tells you to cut the grass this way or do this, that and the other and you don't do it. They have the right to punish you. Oh, no, not according to the new constitution, you know, because they said you can't beat your children, but there is a loophole in the constitution. You go beat them next door, okay? All right, all right. You can laugh in church, okay? You're allowed to smile. I know I can't see it under the mask, but at least smile on the inside, okay? So at least I know you're smiling. But we need to understand that God is almighty, and He's put things in place for you and I to succeed. And when we do it His way, we will succeed. Imagine now you desire uh, to play soccer and you don't know the rules. Have you seen those little ones? They look so cute. Eh? The goalkeeper, everybody's on the ball. You see them, two, three years old. They're all around the ball. Goalkeeper, everybody wants to be a striker. And you just see, whoo, it's chaos, but it's so cute. But there is no point to that game because nobody is following their role. Nobody's in the right position. And you, once the people, those little kids start to know their position, when they start to know the rules, that's when the game becomes enjoyable. And it's the same thing with you and I. When we understand the principles of God, life becomes enjoyable. Okay? That you don't need to be a Christian and, and suffer. Understand? Life can be good because God actually makes it, makes it clear in His Word that if you obey me, you will eat the good of the land. You will experience the best that life has for you. And yes, trials and tribulations will come. Even though the trial and the tribulation comes, you will overcome. And when you get out of the storm, you're going to come out stronger. You will have more wisdom. You will not make the same mistakes anymore. Because sometimes some storms, we actually are the reason we end up in those storms. Because <laughs> God said, turn left, you turn right. Eh? If, if, if you're a person um, that sails, you must see what they say. It's like when, when they lose wind, they actually look for a storm to get wind to blow them so they can move. So some people need to look for a, a storm to see what you are actually made of. Do you really want to see what faith I have? Because many people don't know the faith that they have. They, they, they got presumption because things are good right now. Or... I, I, I think God's going to make it. I, I think, no, no, no. You will know that you know that you know when the storm comes. When sickness knocks on your door, when, uh, uh, when you lose a job, when finances starts to run out, when uh, things start to run out, that is now where you start to realize, do I have faith or not? Okay. So I'm going to ask this simple question. Is God a liar? Okay. Some people, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's like, you're like his little bobby heads, you know, it's like, I'm not sure. Yes, but is God a liar? No. Because Satan is a liar and he's the father of all lies. But God Almighty is no liar. Does God say what he means and does he mean what he says? But then why is it when Satan says you're not going to make it, you believe Satan over there when God says you're going to make it? So does God say what he means and does he mean what he says? And we need to come to this understanding that when he says it, that settles it. It does not matter how your body feels right now. A simple thing like this. Everybody that is married, yeah, some mornings you wake up, you don't feel married. It's not your feelings that determine whether you're married. The fact that you've got a, a covenant, first of all, that makes you married. It's not how you feel. It's not because you're going through depression or you've got stress that, that now tells you, no, I'm not married anymore. No, you've got a covenant. You are still married. It's the same thing with Christianity. It, you may not feel like you're saved, but you have been saved, whether you feel like it or not. Your feelings will betray you. Your feelings will deceive you. So that's why we do not live by what we feel. Now, I'm going to go into something now. The economy of God is designed to bring God glory and benefit mankind. Everything that God has done is to benefit mankind. 
everything that he does is to bless you, is to grow you, it's to bring expansion. But that's why I'm saying when you go read the Bible in the book of Genesis, you'll actually see the Garden of Eden. What does the word Eden mean? The pleasure of God. When you read your Bible, it says God put a garden in Eden. He placed a garden in his pleasure. And when he had already put the garden, then he placed man in the garden, which was already in his pleasure. And then he says to Adam, you can eat from any fruit, any tree, except that one tree, just one tree. Everything else is yours. You can have everything that you Be fruitful and multiply. Subdue and take dominion. That is what God had for Adam and for mankind. That was the template back then and it still stands today. And it was for all mankind to be to benefit, not for greed. In nature everything is designed to grow, to multiply, to expand, to be fruitful which brings God glory. You need to understand everything that God does is to bring him glory and when we bring him glory we get great rewards. Seriously, it's rewarding to glorify God. It is rewarding to glorify Him because you'll see even in John chapter 17, then uh, God's, uh, Jesus prayed this. He says, glorify the Son so that I may glorify you. And then He says, the same glory I have, I give to my followers. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. So you never find an orange on an apple tree. Apples produce apples. Oranges produces oranges. Strawberries, strawberries. Okay, it's not on a tree, but I just want to see who's paying attention. It's after its kind. Okay? It's It's not a tree, Pastor. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. It produces after its kind. What kind? (laughs) Whose seed is in itself on the earth? And it was so. So he, right from the beginning, that's it. It settles it. It is a principle that will last for all eternity. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 to 29. Then God blessed who? Them. God blessed us. He's blessed us. We just need to rewind and renew our minds to grasp that He has blessed us. How has He blessed us? According to Ephesians chapter 1, He says, He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Before the natural was created, it was the spiritual. So He has blessed you with spiritual substance already. All you need to know, what is that substance? I'm glad you asked. It's faith, it's anointing, it's glory, it's His kingdom, and so much, 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 much more. Okay. Okay. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every seed through fruit yields seed. I mean, sorry, every tree, sorry. Whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Now you need to understand. I'm going to show you something here. There's something that God has put in the Word of God, which is His idea. It is not a man's idea. It's not an organization's idea. It is God's idea. And we just realize God's not a liar. Correct? So if He puts something in the Word for us to prosper, for us to be blessed, it's our responsibility to discover what it is and obey Correct? Okay. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. While the earth remains, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, we experience in the cold. Okay. Winter and summer, we experience in the winter. And day and night shall not cease. So you need to understand that there's certain things that God has put in place, even in the natural, which is governed by the spiritual. And it will last for 
eternity. It's not going to change. You cannot change it. No matter what you, it's like this, it's like, okay, um, you, you can say uh, you don't believe Jesus is coming back. That doesn't matter. You can pray as much as you want. You can come up with all kinds of doctrines. It's not going to change the fact that Jesus is coming back. It doesn't matter what you feel. It does not matter what you believe. If you don't believe in healing, I've seen too many people healed. It doesn't matter what you think or what you believe because Jesus still heals. You, you can say, I don't believe that God can uh, cancel debt. I've seen too many people's debt canceled. It's not going to change the fact that God still cancels debt. I don't, it, your, your belief is your belief. But it's not going to change the fact God is God. And He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changing. And we need to understand when we come to this place that God does not change. Then you're going to see how everything in your life will change for the better. Amen? Okay. The earth was long before any of us were here. Think about it. Even when you and I are not here, the earth is still going to remain. It was long before we were here. The sun rose way before you and I were here. We could not change the fact the sun's still going to uh, rise and set. It's not going to change the fact what you believe. You can say the sky is pink, but the sky is blue. It's not going to change the fact unless there's a volcano and there's a setting and then you get the sunset that changes, it makes it look pink, but it's for a season. It's not going to change the fact the sky is blue. At night it's black because there's no light there. It's not going to change. You can change the way you think and you can believe however, but it's not going to change the fact the earth is the earth. It's going to remain. It was here before you. It will remain after you. That's how God designs things. It's to last. It's not made in China. Okay? It's meant to last. Yeah. I can talk to people here. They, they would say they don't make things like they used to. You know, I work with refrigerators. I've seen fridges that be, they came off Noah's Ark. Today, you have a fridge. It lasts two years if you're lucky. But back in the day, it lasted. It even lost a nuclear bomb explosion because even the metal was hard. Nowadays, you just push it. Have you seen the cars? You just touch the car, clunk, and then you got a dent. Yeah. Nokia lasted. You can use it as a weapon. That's when it was big, like a brick. You got self-defense, and you can still phone the cops or phone the ambulance because the, the criminal has been knocked out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. But I want to make a disclaimer, family. I want to make a disclaimer. What we are about to read right now, it is not my opinion. It's not my words. You'll notice if you read the King James Version, it is in red. So when you have a Bible that has red writing, that means it's Jesus is speaking. Okay. So I'm going to show you Jesus' heart here. Okay. Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. I'm going to do a lot of reading tonight, okay? For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to, uh, to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave them five talents, to another two, and another one, and to each according to his own ability. Each and every one of us have different abilities. Each and every one of us have certain capabilities. Some of us are more responsible than others, Okay? It took me a long time to realize that I had to grow up and become responsible. Praise God, I got saved. And then I realized it's time to wise up. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Okay? And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Notice that he hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled the accounts with him, with them. So he who received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. See, whatever God can trust you with little, he can trust you with much. But however you steward what God gives you now will determine the much. Okay. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He who has received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. 
I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid and t- uh, your talent in the ground. Look there, you have what is yours. But the Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew what I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Now, I'm gonna, now, please, disclaimer, this is not me speaking. I am not attacking you. I'm not rebuking you. But I want to show you something, the response the Lord has. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. So if you've been entrusted with a certain amount of talents and gifts and finances in there, and you've been faithful, God is going to give you more responsibilities because he can trust you. Okay? And give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. That's sad. eh? That's why you notice sometimes people are not advancing. It's like, it feels like two steps forward and 20 steps back. Don't put up your hand if you experience that. But the good news is if you've been trusted and you start to do it God's way, you're going to see it's going to be 20 steps forward and maybe one step back. Because you're going to, wow, <laughs> that's the only back step. Okay? And cast the unprofitable servant. That's Jesus speaking. The unpro- So each and every one of us here have been created to profit. Each and every one of us here have been created to increase. Each and every one of us here have been created to multiply, to expand, to accelerate, to increase. And then because this one did not increase, he was an unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. He says, cast him out into darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hectic. Now, for time's sake, we're going to go to John chapter 15. I'm going to just give it to you there quickly. It says, I am the vine, okay? Whoever's in the vine shall produce fruit. And it says, um, those that produce fruit, my Father will prune you so that you can produce much fruit. So when you look at God wants fruit, God demands fruit. We need to be fruitful. We need to be fruitful. That's not me. That's why I asked you. Listen, yeah? This is God speaking. He demands, because we're going to stand one day before God, not just because of our sin, because Jesus is going to say, I recognize them, okay? Uh, this one I knew. Then you're going to get this other. Didn't I prophesy? We healed the sick. We raised the dead in your name. Did we not cast out devils? And Jesus says, I didn't know this one. But then there's others that he's going to look and say, okay, by the way, they, they knew, I know them. I have a relationship with them. Oh, yeah. Did you know we gave the, her one talent and she produced a thousand talents? I, see, whatever God has given you, you're going to be weighed according to that. Because if you look in the book of Revelation, it says that the elders lay down their crowns. When you look at the crowns of kings, the, kings, the crown reveals their uh, dominion. It reveals their wealth. So you and I, when we come before the Lord, we're not going to just be weighed according to uh, uh, how good we were on earth. It was how good and how well did we steward what God gave us. People don't realize that because he's going to demand fruit from that. Are you laying up an inheritance for your children's children? Or is it just me now? I'm going on a holiday now. I spend it all and that's it. Clark. Or are you laying up an inheritance so that the next generation, look at David. David laid up enough gold and silver, okay, for his son Solomon to build the temple. To the point that in the time of Solomon, silver was scrap metal. Read your Bible. Silver was scrap metal in the time of Solomon. That's the wealth that has been laid up for the children of God. And I know people get bent out of shape. Oh, prosperity. No, 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 no. The gospel will prosper you. You need to understand that the enemy does not want you to prosper. Right now, imagine, imagine if we were prospering. And somebody says, listen, yeah, um, I'm behind my payments on my house and my car. And you write one check. 
and you pay off the house and the car. No, no, no. You don't say amen because now, how can you talk about prosperity like that? All you want is our money. No, no, no. Imagine what a blessing it would be to bless somebody in that manner. And where does the glory go? To God. Because God blessed you to be a blessing. So therefore, you're blessing others, and it brings God glory. Because when that person sees that I'm behind on my payments, but now my, 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 my car is paid off, they're going to give God glory. Because they were praying, Lord, please help me, please help me. And God answered their prayer through a man or a woman. But we need to understand the principles of God. So I just want you to understand, finances, God, you, we saw it in Jesus' own words. If I, if I can't trust you with unrighteous mammon, I cannot trust you with heavenly riches. So how we steward our finances will reveal what God is going to release in our lives, what we're going to own and what we're going to rule and reign over. Amen? So if you need an envelope, please raise your hands. Please understand, this is not just a, a principle just for finances. This is a principle for the gifts and the graces that God has given you. Because many of you got ministries, many of you got businesses birthed on the inside of you. And when you are, 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 are able to steward what belongs to somebody else, God will enrich you and bless you with what belongs to you. Amen? So if you need an envelope, raise your hand. Okay, put up your hands. Um, if you do not have cash with you, uh, my precious wife that's on the other side over there, um, you can swipe your card over there. We've got two little baskets here in front, and you can sow a seed as, as you desire or as your